the very last Spartan Ops mission is actually one of the best. And you want to know why? No infinite respawns. Enemies just spawn in, you talk them down, and then you move forward. Kind of shame we had to wait so long to get something like this. Hello and welcome everyone, I am RC and this is the final Spartan Ops chapter. Episode 10, Chapter 5. Uh, episode 10 is called Exodus and this one is called One Last Time. I think it's actually one of the best. Doing it on Legendary Solo and No Deaths as well. Pretty much as hard as you can make it without introducing Honor Rules. So I've actually gone with a camo, which is fairly unusual for a loadout. Still going with standard DMR, still going with plasma pistol. Camo is just going to allow me to get around corners, deliver some killing blows to enemies before they can return fire. Which with the amount of enemies is still going to be a challenge. Now there are still a lot of enemies you're going to have to cut through. Make your way to the harvester, there are lots of enemies in there. There's enemies inside the harvester. And then you activate the harvester that drills down into the forerunner facility that's buried in some rocks for some reason. Then there are a load of Prometheans in there. Lots of knights and insane amount of knights. Have to deal with all solo and with fairly limited ammunition. You're gonna have to really scour the battlefield to get the ammunition you need, particularly plasma pistols. At least if you're not dying. If you are allowing deaths, then just die and get another plasma pistol, and that makes it fairly easy. Once you cut through those guys, you're actually going to have to fight your way back out through a few enemies. And then that will be the end of it. But the key thing that makes this mission so good is that the enemies are just... They spawn in as you're coming to areas, yes, because that just has to happen. But then, you know, once you cut through the enemies, it's not like there are going to be even more enemies just dropping down on your head continuously. It's actually more structured like an actual campaign mission. And there's one or two things I don't like about it still. More right at the end, really. And I'll tell you about those when I come to them. But in general terms, I do think this is one of the best Spartan Ops missions in the entire game. So it's good to end on a high note. Just going to do a little bit of range shooting. I can never do that. It always goes off slightly for some reason. I don't know why. I could swear I was aiming at it, but... It I swear there's some sort of randomness into how where my actual shot goes. In Halo 3 when you're doing range shooting with a plasma pistol overcharge like that, it was dead on accurate, it was like sniper accurate. There seems to be some sort of inaccuracies in it in Halo 4, tell me if I'm wrong. So there's also some Fjord guns in that crate, but plasma pistols are what I really want. And one of the things, universally, which is kind of bad about Spartan Ops, is the enemies, sorry, not enemies, but ammunition despawns very quickly, as you can see. So that sword would have been nice to use against one of the hunters. Unfortunately, it's already gone before I've even barely got there. So, in particularly plasma pistols, there would be loads of them, because of all the enemies that are around. All the jackals and grunts that have plasma pistols. But since they despawn so quickly, unfortunately you're going to have to rely on the ones that spawn in the crates. Which won't despawn over time. Just got one more. Do the exact same thing. So yeah, range shooting's working alright there. Sometimes it doesn't. There's a couple of hunters inside this harvester. Or is it four? There's at least two. And there was actually a sword that disappeared and that would have been ideal to use against hunters. So, one, two already. Those jackals with the sniper rifles are priority alpha though. Since it's two of them and two different angles, one shot from each will kill you. And that happened to me a couple of times. Playing like this, going for no deaths on Legendary Solo, it's hard, but once you do it, it's actually fairly rewarding. 
having to figure out like okay when and where do I use these weapons how do I conserve my ammo That's something you don't get when you're just going up for for it in matchmaking and you're dialing as many deaths as you like and people are dying like 40 times or something ridiculous it's just spawn plasma pistol overcharge die and spawn <laughs> So, in lieu of a sword, which is a one-hit kill against Hunter if you get it on the orange fleshy bit on their back, we're going to use the Fuhrer gun instead. Where are the Hunters? I think they've retreated. So, if I now correct myself, I believe there are only two Hunters. They start off fairly close to you, and that would be a good opportunity to take them out with the sword. But now they're much further back. And up close to some other enemies. Don't want to get too close to them at this point. Otherwise we'll be taking fire from those guys as well. So I'm using the camo intermittently amongst all these fights. Camo and going around the corner delivering a few shots before they see me. Pretty standard tactic. But it becomes almost essential when I actually get into the cave system and where a bunch of Prometheans are. Ridiculous number of Promethean Knights. Oops. Also I've got the mobility perk which gives me the infinite sprint and also the ammo perk which is almost essential on every Spartan Ops mission particularly so I can have as much DMR ammo as I like or sorry as much as I can DMR is something I'm gonna have to give up in this mission unfortunately unlike in chapter 1 there is not any infinite ammo boxes on this mission as far as I know so I'm gonna have to opt for some carbines instead of which there are quite a lot which, especially dealing against Prometheans, is not ideal. But it'll do. Now I can see what this thing can do. Kinda reminds me of the Lich Gun, actually. Which I only saw very briefly in the campaign. That's a very neat hole. Green's a pretty weird colour for seemingly plasma based energy or weapon. Green was mostly fuel rods and carbines, so to see it in a completely different type of weapon is a bit unusual. Let's get in the cave, Crimson. We don't have much time. I think they pretty much build it just for this mission anyway. So don't think about it too much, really. So, done with Covenant for now. Now it's the Knights. Plasma Pistol combo is still going to be the best thing to use. Going to have to backtrack a few times to get some more Plasma Pistols. Because otherwise I'm not going to be able to take these guys out. He can take you out very quickly. He's got a binary rifle. Stick very close to the rocks. Should get about five shots out of the pleasant pistol. Just gonna pick up that because it's got maybe three shots in it. Sorry, three kills for the knights. Two shots to each knight. These guys rush fairly aggressively to you, and we'll come to the edge of that cave entrance there, tunnel rather. But they won't come all the way up to you. So don't rush too aggressively into that section. Because there are quite a lot of them and they will take you out. Then it opens up again into a much larger cave. Look at that. I don't see the artifact. Good. Rather than a orange lighting, it has more of a white lighting. Bluish, maybe. There are loads of knights in here. And still a load of crawlers. Gonna have to get through eventually. I think there are about 
six or seven knights in here. There are two at the back that you'll particularly want to worry about. One has a binary rifle and one has a incineration cannon. So there is the one with the incineration cannon. Just going to take out the watcher first because I do not want him to revive him. Oh, that was a bit close. So these guys are being a little bit more aggressive than I was expecting them to be. But what I ideally want to do is use the binary rifle that I have to take out the bigger targets that are way back there. Oh, he's moved. Can't see him now. So the incineration guy, incineration cannon guy sort of hangs out right in the center, right at the back. And then there's a binary rifle one over to the right, fairly close to him. Banner Rifle 1 doesn't spawn straight away, so that's why I can't see him right now. But as you take out a few more enemies, get a bit closer, that's when he'll spawn. Wonder if I could get an assassination here. Whoop, no, never mind. Risky move against one with a scatter shot. I mean, there should be enough plasma pistols so that I could take one out with it anyway. Ooh. Come on, one more shot. There we go. Ouch. But I wanted to really use the binary rifle as much as I could. Didn't want to waste it. Don't want to get close to that guy with the incineration cannon. Fortunately, that means I'm going to sacrifice the incineration cannon ammo, since it's going to despawn before I can get there. But that's okay. It's better than have to deal with him up close. Well, at least my estimation. You can do what you like, really. As with all Spartan Ops missions, it's basically based on enemy death. There's the guy with the binary rifle. Careful about him. Right, now I'm going to go back for a plasma pistol. You're going to have to pretty much remember where the boxes are. And this is why I had the mobility sprint. So that I could keep running without having to wait all the time. Still a little frustrating. But rather than sacrificing a life, which of course I'm trying not to do with all of these run-throughs. This is the only option. And there's Vox. Also get some more carbine ammo while I'm here. I'm gonna have to sprint back unfortunately. Of course, if you don't care about deaths, then just kill yourself, get another DMR and plasma pistol, and keep killing. Once you've cleared out all the guys in here, there'll be some sort of weird reason that you can't just go straight into the the room where the artifact is that's tying the infinity to Requiem. So yeah, that's just going to be another sort of random diversion. Make you kill a couple of extra guys in a little sort of anti-room, I guess. It's a little bit tricky to approach this area without getting too close to the enemies. Because a bunch with scatter shots on towards the left, and there's this one with the binary rifle over to the road to the right. There he is. And if I did not have camo right there for that moment, that would have been much more difficult. 
Now that he's dead, it's giving me a little bit of space on the right hand side to now flank these guys with the scatter shots. They're going to pretty much stay in their patrol zones. I'm going to want to use this on some other knights that are coming up in just a second. Don't really want to have to backtrack yet again for another plasma pistol. That's what I will have to end up doing if I did lose that binary rifle. That's everyone. Nice work. Looks like this is the path deeper into whatever this place is. So yeah, the big door is over to my right. And I was like, yeah, let's go to the door. I know where we're going. It's like, oh wait, I have to actually hit this trigger first. Whoops. <laughs> So this was a little bit annoying. It's like, I've already come so far, like, do you really need to make me go on another little diversion? It's a little bit pointless. Could have just made this a sort of a longer linear tunnel towards the main area, rather than just a, another diversion. Include the same geometry and everything, but not have to frustrate you. So that guy had a binary rifle. That's why I wanted to take him out pretty quickly. Can be a little bit difficult if you don't have something powerful and take him out quickly. One of fewer guns that are still back in those crates would have done nicely as well. And a little bit more binary rifle ammo, that's good for me. No animation that time. Bit weird. So, no enemies for a little bit. Just a little bit of cinematic action. Not actual cinematic, but you know, things going on. Big foreign stuff moving. There's a lot of mist in here. Done and done. Take it offline, Crimson. Find it a bit weird that there's so much mist. Artifacts off the network. And once you hit that, your speed actually increases for some strange reason. Don't really know why. But there's a few more enemies you're gonna have to fight on the way out, which actually makes it slightly easier for you, I guess. And behind you, things are still shaking. These are apparently random gravity distortions. I didn't really appreciate this, to be honest. I was just like, just let me get out. Stop throwing me around like a ragdoll. <laughs> Now, here are some enemies. Oh, still getting thrown around apparently. There are some invisible ones, and there are also some ranger ones, I believe. They spawn in semi consistent places, so if you pay attention with eagle eyes, you can just about tell where they are. I can't really see them at the minute. Headshot will kill them in one shot. That was just a body shot. Boom, there we go. And there we go, second time. So there's a couple of invisible ones somewhere around here. I'm trying to find them. Oh, I missed them completely. This was the other thing I didn't really like about this because they say oh they'll reactivate the artifact if you give them a chance that doesn't actually happen they chase you for a bunch of time but then they just sort of like give up and ignore you and go the opposite way so if they'd made that threat like actually real that would have been good so they're not too hard to overcome anyway and they do require that they're dead anyway so just making the threat more than just sort of words <laughs> would have been good. Be Murphy, 
Because you know me. I was like, oh really? I, I just want to ghost out and get the pelican and leave this place. So that's what I did one time. And then it's like, wait, where's the pelican? It's like, oh, you actually do have to kill these guys. And also behold, one of the most maneuverable pelicans ever. Jesus, look at that. That's it. Done. Episode 10, Chapter 5, one last time. Chapter complete. Mission complete. 19 minutes 48. That was a pretty long one. Much, much faster after you go in co-op, obviously. Hope you've enjoyed this series. I'm going back and filling in some of the gaps I've still got. Uh, previous episode on the left-hand side, and you can have a link to the playlist on the right-hand side if you want. See if there's any ones you've missed. Have fun with it. And I'll see you with a new adventure next time.